Great, so let's go back to our previous button here. So what we want to do is to make sure that we go backwards. Now to make sure that we don't end up with negative indexes here, what I like to do, I'm going to say if, all right, current in question index is greater than zero, only then will I ask the current question here to be equal the increment or decrement, I should say, minus one, because we're going backwards. And I'm going to make sure also that we don't run into other issues that we very well know of array index issues here. So question list dot size like that. Okay, very good. But once we do that, we must call our update question again. That's very important because remember, our update question, make sure to update the question, depending on the current index. Okay, so this should work. Hopefully, let's check a take a look all right so we've changed let's try to go nothing's gonna happen if we go forward a little bit and try to go back and we do go back until we go back to the first question and up till that point we can't go further back because that is what we said here we don't want it to go further back there we go so this is good news we can iterate through our questions and look at that it's all working and we can go back and so forth next thing we want to do here is add an actual zero out of a hundred or so forth so we know exactly how many questions we have and go from there well to do that the first thing we need to do let's go back to our process finished because again this is where we set up the first question the user is supposed to see but also it's a good place for us to show the counter how many questions we have in total and how many questions we have answered and so forth so i'm going to say question current text view dot set text so what is it that i want to show so what we want to show here actually something like zero out of 234 questions okay that's what we're going to show you can change to what you want. So essentially, I'm going to use the current question index where we at at this point, and I am going to add, let's say, concatenate, I should say, like this, to say out of, okay, and I'm going to say question list dot size. That's all. So now it's going to say if we are at zero, it's going to zero out of the size of our questionnaire release. So how many question and answer objects we have here. So if you save this real quick here, we should be able to see zero out of 913. Let's probably make this a little bit bigger. And that's going to help a little bit. So you can see here zero out of 913. So there's 913 questions. That's very good. Now, as we go through, notice that nothing is changing here. So we need to change along too as we go through. So it says now it's two out of 913 and so forth, right? A nice counter. How do we do that? Well, the same thing has to be done inside of our methods here. So at this point here, inside of update question, because update question is indeed what it's always called pretty much everywhere, right? So you see here, update question, update question. So it makes sense to actually add that functionality inside of our update question. So I'm going to do the same thing here. In fact, I'm going to say question, text view, that set. I can just go ahead and copy what we had here so we don't have to redo everything. There we go. Now, the question array list is not being seen here. Why? Well, let's see what is this going to tell us to do. Right. In this case here, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use this question list here so it's seen everywhere. That's what we did, is it? Right. Right. That makes sense. So this should be our question list. What's happening here is because our question array list indeed is just inside here. So it's okay to use it inside here, but also there's a reason why we added inside of a variable, which we made it to be an instance variable. So we can actually use it everywhere. So that's why it wasn't working. So now same thing, question list that size. Save this, let's see. Zero out of 913, let's keep going. Look at that, now it's changing. We can go and voila, it is indeed working. Okay, keep going, and the numbers are changing. If you go back to, we should see things updating accordingly there. All right, so what's left now is to check the answer. So where do we call the check the answer? Well, the check the answer is going to be called, of course, here. I'm going to just call here check answer, and we're going to pass a Boolean. So in this case here, true. So I'm going to just say true because this is what the user would have said they want this answer to be, or this answer is, they're guessing. It's true, that's why we pass true. And 
we're going to do the same thing here. Check answer. This is going to be false. OK, let's go ahead and create this check the answer here. So we create here, create method, and voila. So Boolean, I'm just going to call this user choose correct. You can call whatever you want, but that works. So I'm going to go ahead and get a Boolean here, which will go ahead and get the answer from our question, right? So because we are going to compare those two to see whether the users corrected the correct one or not. So I'm going to say here answer is true is equal question. I'm going to use question list in this case dot get index is going to be current index you see we're still passing our index is answer true. Okay, so now we're getting for this current question that the user is seeing, right, we're going to go and see, get the actual answer in the field, meaning, okay, this is important sometimes to make sure we understand what's going on here. So we are saying, okay, get at any point, get the current question. So user is seeing this question, for instance, and now we're getting this answer here. We know that it's true, at least the computer or the app will know that it's true, and then we can compare to whatever users have entered. Okay, very good. So then what do we do? Well, first of all, I'm going to say int toast message ID. This is just for us. Okay. And I'm going to say if user correct answer is equal to the answer that we got or we're getting from the actual question, right? The object that we created, then we are going to do something here. The first thing is I'm going to say toast message ID is equal to r.id.correct. We haven't created yet. So I'm say correct answer. And I'm going to say else. It's the opposite. I'm going to say toast is equal to r.id.incorrect or let's just say wrong answer. Okay, so we haven't created these strings yet, which we can do right here. So it says here, create a field, create a resource. That's what we want. The resource is going to be correct like this and for this one is going to be wrong just like that very good and this is going to be used of course for our toast so i'm going to say toast dot make text main dot this i'm going to pass the toast message id right it's going to be that text here and toast dot short that show like that. That's it. So at this point here, I can actually run this and check things out. Okay, so at this point, I can save this and give it a run. We should be able to see something hopefully. So let's save that and run. Oops, we have a problem. We always have some issues. What's going on here? Resource element is empty. Okay, let's click here run with info. So that way it actually gives us where the problem is. Hopefully says here inner element must either be resource reference or empty that's very not helpful at all that is the beauty here isn't it so values id so this is a problem that i've noticed every time we add these references here uh, with our code so instead of ids here what i'm going to do i'm going to just go ahead and delete this whole file right huh. i just noticed something very interesting here it's actually the problem here is that i said our ID. It should be string. Oh boy. Okay, let's do that. String. And let's go ahead and actually see if this time this doesn't give us a problem. It should. Shouldn't, I should say. Uh, this is going to be correct. And this is going to be wrong. So this should do this. Let's go ahead and give it a quick run here and see. Okay, let's see. So this horoscope actually blah, 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 say true. That's wrong. Very good. It's working. Let's go to the next. This one, I'm just going to say false. Well, that's correct. Let's keep going. Let's see. That's true. That is wrong. Let's say this. That's correct. So it is indeed working. That is wonderful. All right. So there we go, folks. At this point, we could stop here, perhaps make a little bit of changes in our text that is showing here, right? But we're not going to stop here because I want to show you other things that we can do, such as animations and so many other things. Congratulations if you got to this point here, but there's a little bit more that is coming that I think you're going to enjoy.